presentation of Fox Sports. We are Black Fox. We are Wisconsin. Milwaukee, but outside Miller Park, that's not going to slow down any Brewers fans. We're getting ready for game two between the Brewers and the Marlins. Everyone's still talking about the finale to last night's game. The story, Adam Conley, he went seven and two thirds, no hit innings, four walks, seven strikeouts. He kept the Brewers lineup off balance all night long, but the Brewers made it very interesting in the ninth. They were looking to avoid the no hitter. Jonathan Lucroy dropped in the single. From there, the Brewers were able to tack on three runs and bring the winning run to the plate. Had a chance to win it. Didn't come away with the big victory, but certainly you have to like the approach that the Brewers had in the ninth, making it interesting. And what Craig Council said was a small victory in the way that they were able to come back. Former Brewers pitcher Juan Nieves and current Miami Marlins pitching coach uh, knows a little bit about a no hitter. He pitched the only no hitter in Brewers history, April 15th, 1987, caught by our very own Bill Schroeder. So we take you back to that night in Baltimore. Again, the only no hitter in Brewers franchise history. And Rock had a chance to catch up with Juan Nieves about that no hitter and also the decision to pull Conley last night with a career high 116 pitches. Uh, unfortunately, this is probably the most pitches he's ever thrown. Uh, it's a little different process now with the young pitchers uh, coming up, and, and I think uh, it's, it's very valuable because, you know, mm -hmm. pitching is such a commodity now that we need to uh, be cautious of those things. But eventually, you have to let the horses go, and it, this is not the right time, I guess. But, uh, wow, it's, uh, it, was, uh, it was exciting to watch him. It's, this kid is, uh, I mean, I know the people in Milwaukee and the people here have seen him just now, but uh, this kid is uh, in a good, the progress has been uh, amazing. Despite losing the no-hitter, it was certainly a terrific performance by Adam Conley last night. Seven and two-third, no-hit innings. And uh, tonight, the matchup a little different. We'll have a lefty, Wei-Yan Chen. He'll go up against the Brewers. Chase Anderson looking to get back to form from his first two starts when he did not allow an earned run. We'll go up to the booth. Matt LaPay and Bill Schroeder will break down the pitching matchup for you when we come back here at Miller Park.
on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. By your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. And by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. Middle game of this weekend series. Chase Anderson on the mound for the Brewers tonight as Milwaukee will face another lefty. Wei in Chen getting the call for the Miami Marlins back at Miller Park alongside Bill Schroeder. I'm Matt LePay. And oh, Chase Anderson, the, the starting pitching theme continues uh, here tonight, Rock. We've seen the extremes from Anderson, really good and really the other way. And let's hope he can rewind it to those first two outings. Yeah, tonight. he was dialed in the first couple of starts after a very rough spring training. Matter of fact, in spring training, he was not very good early in games, but that kind of turned around in his first two starts but his last two I guess reverting back but it's all about location for Chase Anderson just like real estate location 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 I know it's a little real simplistic but that's what it's about with Anderson he doesn't throw hard he's got to find the corners early in the count get to the curveball and change up and uh, you know when you throw strikes early in the count you get hitters to chase late in the count. All right, Brewers trying to even up this series. Chase Anderson gets the call. We saw just about everything last night. What's in store tonight? Let's find out together. Saturday night at Miller Park. Brewers and Marlins coming up on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Superhero night at Miller Park and Batman has lost his southpaw form there it looks like throwing out the first pitch but they are decked out in superhero attire here at the ballpark for the middle game of this weekend series the Brewers against the Miami Marlins crew looking to even things up after a rally fell short last evening in a very entertaining game but the Marlins able to hold on and get the win and Chase Anderson and company looking to get things turned around here tonight in front of the home crowd. Brewers baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino spend the nights with luxury. Cold and rainy outside so no worries inside roof once again closed as we continue with the series and the homestand Brewers and the Miami Marlins here tonight as Don Mattingly's team now has won six straight all on the road 
Yes, he had that decision which he said was an easy one to make last night. We'll get into that a bit more here as we get started with the second game of the set tonight. So let's check out Mattingly's batting order. The Prado Wadamu batting order. Derek Dietrich at the top. Martin Prado, Christian Yelich, the top three. Giancarlo Stanton did not play last night in the lineup tonight. Justin Bohr had a huge night. Marcelo Zuna. JT Real Nito behind the plate. Danny Echevarria is the shortstop. Wei Chen rounds out the batting order, and that's the order that will face Chase Anderson. Well, Anderson has been very good in his career against the Miami Marlins. Three starts, a 2 0 record, and a 225 earned run average. He got roughed up his last time out against the Phillies, a loss. Four innings, six earned runs, and 99 pitches through. Four innings. He's got to be able to manage that pitch count a lot better. The Brewers, as we've been saying for a while now, need a nice long start out of Anderson tonight. All right, check out your Menards defense for Milwaukee here tonight. You got Ryan Braun, Ramon Flores, and Santana in the outfield. A couple of changes. You got Colin Walsh getting a start at third base, and Aaron Hill goes from third to second. So a different uh, combination up the middle with VR and Hill. Carter at first, and Lucroy. Behind home plate. And there's Chase Anderson continuing the tradition as he pays tribute to his late father. Of course, so, and we've mentioned it before, but it's worth saying again that he always wears his father's uh, socks, cowboy boots, the belt buckle, the jeans, the pink polo shirt. His father, Robert, passed away in 2012. As you see him marking up the Miller Park mound before this first start, which is a bad start. First pitch swinging. Derek Dietrich launches one over the wall and right. And unfortunately for Anderson and the Brewers, that's how this game begins. Well, first pitch, fastball down the middle, and once again, the Brewers are going to have to play from behind. Boy, Miami flexing their muscles in this series. There's that four seam fastball grip. Right down the middle and Dietrich knocks it out of here. No doubt are out there in the right field. So yeah, the Brewers uh, certainly would have liked to have had a nice quick start out of Chase Anderson. Three up three down to get the Brewers bats going but a lead off home run. And just like that the Marlins a hot team. And they have the best of starts and here's Martin Prado. Speaking of the best of starts, he is having a terrific month of April. Second in the National League and batting average 397. Another three hit night for him last night. As that has been a trend for the third baseman for the Marlins. Each of his last three games, he has had three hits. This is a very good hitting ball club, and it's even better tonight with Stanton in the lineup. They were swinging the bats last night. And they jumped out, the Marlins did, to a 6 0 lead. As you see, Giancarlo Stanton, this will be his first game action at Miller Park since the injury in September of 2014. Two strike pitch to Prado, and that is strike three called, and there's the first out of the night. Yeah, that's what he needs that good location on the corners. He can't afford to be messing around with. Too much of the white of the plate. Luke Roy setting up outside and he hits the target. There's that two seam or four seam fastball grip once again. This one right where he wanted it. So a home run and a punch out to begin the night. Here at Miller Park and here is Christian Yelich. And Rock mentioned how. Well, this Miami team hits the ball. Yelich has been a big part of that. A ground ball to Aaron Hill, and there's out number two. So Anderson trying to settle after the first pitch homer off the bat of Derek Dietrich, and here comes Giancarlo Stanton. His last five games, he has been lighting it up. And part of this road trip and part of the winning streak, four homers, and has driven in eight. Over his last five, helping his team to a four game sweep of the Dodgers in LA. Yeah, one of the most prolific home run hitters in the game. This one taken off of Clayton Kershaw to the opposite field. About as strong as it gets, Giancarlo Stanton, when he centers on one, not too many can hit him any further. This, of course, the 
site where he suffered the serious facial injuries when he was hit by a Mike Fires pitch back in September of 2014. He still wears the guard. We're talking about a very, very talented player, has a huge contract with this Marlins club. And last year he did have injury trouble again. Was hit by a pitch, broke a bone in his wrist, and his season lasted but 74 games. But he had 27 homers. Yes, it gives you an idea of. How productive he can be and working him carefully Chase Anderson gives up a two out walk. You pitch to him comfortably but you have a very tough customer coming up next. In Justin Bohr. It almost became an oh by the way. With all the no hitter talk that was going on but Bohr had a monster night with a couple of home runs he drove in five of the six runs Miami put on the board. Man, that's the thing, you know, you pitch carefully to Stanton, and then you have to deal with this guy who had come into the game with just one home run with, you know, hit two last night. Marlins have been pretty good on the road, nine and four, only two and seven at home. Of course, that's had a lot to do, has a lot to do with these guys starting to swing the bats, the starting pitching's been good, things starting to come together. And the Marlins won. In San Francisco last Sunday took four straight from the Dodgers in L.A. and won the series opener here last night. As Anderson jumps out in front of all two strikes to the Marlins first baseman. He hit 23 homers last year did Bohr taking over the first base job. He drove in 73. Yeah, you hit home run, you know, 24, 25 home runs. That's a lot of home runs considering where they play their home games. Not easy to hit home runs at Marlins Park. That's a big ballpark, particularly in the gaps. The Brewers will be in South Florida on the next road trip. Back into the seven game swing that has four against the Reds in Cincinnati. This game two of a six game homestand here for Milwaukee with the Marlins here through the weekend and then the Los Angeles Angels come in Monday night Tuesday night and Wednesday afternoon. Brewers trying to cool off a hot team in the meantime the Brewers have lost their last three. And looking for their first win since last Sunday afternoon against the Phillies. And Anderson having a difficult time with this change up here not able to get it close enough to get swings. Get it over the plate get it down in the zone you might get a swing and a miss or maybe a weak grounder. Change up has missed the plate. Three two pitch coming. Popped out of play. Keep an eye on that pitch count as we mentioned. Anderson needed 99 through four innings. That was the the grinder last Saturday night. A four hour game that had the Phillies winning. And Bohr stays alive. This is again part of the. They, hitters against the Brewers they seem like they foul off a number of pitches and you get a lot of counts like you're seeing now. And, then and, the, and those foul balls add up don't they I mean yeah. foul balls and. You know wasting pitches out of the zone when you get ahead in the count. It was a 35. Pitch inning for Zach Davies in the first inning last night. And went through a quick second inning but. Consistency still not there with most of this pitching rotation. And there's a base hit from Bohr through the shift. And Stanton 
They get a pretty sizable turn at second base, is able to scamper back, but the Marlins now have runners at first and second with two men out. And it is surprising that he wasn't able to get to third base. He was running on the pitch, realizing that Santana has a pretty good arm out there in right field. Didn't want to make the third out at third base. Now you see him, he uh, just decided to hold up, kind of running at half speed. He might have been trying to skip rope here a little bit, maybe. No. Flinched a little. They picked up his coach and they held him up. So a leadoff homer, a strikeout, a ground out, and then the next two Marlins reach a walk to Stanton and a single by Justin Bohr. And here's Marcelo Zuna. Ozuna 0 for 2 last night and is now part of a big moment that the Brewers have in franchise history when he hit into a triple play. The seventh turned by the crew in the history of the franchise. And around the horn double play. Aaron Hill, Yadiel Rivera, and then the nice turn. Rivera and the throw over to Chris Carter to complete the 5 4 3 triple play. Hey, Craig Council talking about that uh, that turn for Rivera at second base after the game last night, saying it's a it an incredible turn, a good athletic play. Throw was a little bit off the mark by Hill, but still able to get the throw off. He's got a terrific arm. 2 1 pitch to Ozuna. A good cut. Let's take a look at it. This is what we're talking about last night. Yeah, check out the turn by Rivera. Look at that throw. Able to get it. Straighten himself up and make a good throw to first base to get the triple play. That was in the fifth inning. Last night's game had just about everything. Here's Rivera showing off that arm last night. You're right, Rock Council was saying that really he appreciated it more when he took a look at it after the game. The yeah, throw was sinking from Aaron Hill, and he had to pick it. He had a runner right on top of him, still able to get enough on the throw to get it, get the out at first. 2 2 pitch. And another full count for Chase Anderson. He'll need at least 27 pitches to get through this first inning. Marlins with a run across on the first pitch of the night at Derek Dietrich home run. Runners on the move and the bases are loaded. Another bad scenario unfolding for Anderson. Let's see if he can get that third out it's been an elusive one to get here in the first Yeah, the pitch on the outside corner didn't miss by much and that one didn't miss by much either number seven and that was ball four so a bases loaded jam here for Anderson in inning number one and yeah, the Marlins send seven hitters to the plate in the first inning last night and put three runs on the board, all courtesy of the Justin Bohr home run. There's JT Real Muto, the catcher. Jeff Mathis had the role last night for the Marlins behind the plate. Real Muto on a five game hitting streak. And in that run, he has gone 10 for 19. Well, one pitch. You have a stretch like that at this early stage of the season and your average will go up a bunch and that's been the case for real Muto nearly 100 points he has raised his average to get yeah. it to 284 and he swings a bat he doesn't go up there to walk he doesn't have many walks a 304 on base percentage a 
hectic first inning for the Brewers starting pitcher here again. Trying to get out of it giving up just the one run. Here comes the one two. Over to Walsh at third and that will take care of things so it could have been worse lead off Homer. But it's only one nothing as the Brewers get their first cuts. The homer to begin the game. So that's how the Brewers will open here in the bottom of the first. Great Council's team trying to snap what is right now a three game skid. For the first win since last Sunday against the Phillies. Let's take a look at the Ottawatomi batting order here for the Brewers as Domingo Santana will be leading things off. Jonathan VR, Ryan Braun, Jonathan Lucroy back in the cleanup slot. Followed by Chris Carter, Colin Walsh, Aaron Hill over at second, Ramon Flores in center, Chase Anderson rounds out the Brewers batting order against another left hander tonight. This time it's Wei in Chen. Yeah, out of Taiwan, 30 years old. He spent four years with the Baltimore Orioles where he had good success. 46 and 32 overall in four years. He does have postseason experience. A free agent signee by the Miami Marlins in the offseason. You see his numbers there. He won his last game against the Dodgers. Domingo Santana here in the bottom of the first. Well, the Brewers last night did a great job. They went from nearly being no hit to coming within one swing of winning the game last night. It was a crazy night at the park. We showed you the triple play that they turned, but as the game was unfolding and the Marlins were trying to get a combined no hitter. Jonathan Lucroy broke it up with one out of the ninth and then a lot of young guys were moving the line in that ninth and the Brewers actually had the bases loaded for Jonathan VR it was a heck of an at bat heck of a battle but you go from trying to just trying to get a hit <laughs> to being in position to maybe win the game right it was six to nothing one out in the ninth inning you don't even have a base hit you end up putting the go ahead run at home plate. On a 3 2 count with two outs. It was a nice battle. Good job by the guys last night and tonight. Too little, too late. Santana to the gap, left center. It's high off the wall. Taking the turn is Santana on to second with a double, and that's how the Brewers start the home half of the first. Well, you talk about hitting a rope into the gap out there. Just a little bit higher, that would have been a homer. A fastball by Chin who doesn't throw very hard. That was 89 miles an hour. Turned around by Santana. Missed his spot, got it in, and Santana ropes it out there. Look how close it comes to being a homer. Maybe a foot higher. There's a good start. The 
Lead off double from the Brewers right fielder. Setting up an RBI chance for Jonathan VR. As you notice Ozuna out there has got a terrific throwing arm. He played that beautifully. He was hit so hard that I think Ozuna thought he had to play at second base, but nobody was really there. They had Dietrich. He came out not thinking it was going to be a play, but there's not a better arm in the outfield than Ozuna. It's a good young art uh, outfield that the Marlins have. And it is their top group with Giancarlo Stanton out in right. You mentioned Ozuna in center and Kristen Yelich. There he is over in left. And they cover a lot of ground. They all have good throwing arms. The R hit loose in four trips last night. And he lays one down. Chen has the play at first. Sacrifice complete as Santana moves to third. Now let's check out the Menards Marlins defense. These guys have been picking it pretty good this year. Top third in the National League and team defense. Yellow to Zuna Stan. We just got done talking about those guys. Prada with third. You got a Danny Hetzeraria. He's a highlight reel out there at shortstop. Dietrich at second. Justin Bohr, the hitting star last night, and JT Romuto behind home plate. Go back to last night's game. A, a slam would have won it, but, but you would take any kind of a base hit and give this guy one more shot last night. But he was left on deck when the game ended, and the Marlins escaped with a three run victory. Had to bring their closer in, and that's all you, you know, try to do. You get the line moving, you turn that line up over, get him sweating in that dugout, especially when you're down six to nothing going into the ninth inning. Don Manley forced to bring his closer in, and he struggled. After the game, Mattingly said it was an easy decision to pull Adam Conley after seven and two thirds of no hit ball. It was a career high. 116 pitches for Conley. A once in a lifetime opportunity taken away though. <laughs> yeah. That, right. Yeah, absolutely. But, but that's the way the game is these days right. I mean it's all about pitch counts and you got to protect these guys. But I guess if you would ask Conley his thoughts. He'd like to finish. <laughs> his previous high and it's a very young career. A 25 year old young career in the big leagues uh, last August 23rd against the Phillies. It was the only triple digit outing he had in terms of pitch count 106. 116 was the total last night. And he had plenty left in the tank. I mean seventh eighth inning he was throwing his best fastballs at 95. Made the attempt at the combined no hitter and fell two out short. And there's Braun, a one hopper to second. That's Dietrich. This will get a run across. As coming in is Santana, and the Brewers have tied the game. Well, Brewers playing for a run. They have VR bunting, and Braun able to get the RBI with the infield back. Santana had to wait a second. Not sure if that ball is going to be caught in the air, but with the infield back, he's able to score to tie the game. RBI number 18 for Ryan Braun. The Brewers get that run back. The Marlins put on the board to start the game. Here's Jonathan Lucroy, the man who broke up the no hitter last night. One out in the ninth inning. That's how it looked against A.J. Ramos. Yep, and everybody in the press box after the game wondering if Deke Gordon makes that catch. And of course, Deke Gordon is suspended for 90 games, or I should say 80 games and postseason if he gets that far for the Marlins. But he wasn't in there. Dietrich not able to get to it. Luke Roy telling reporters after the game the exit velocity was 68. <laughs> he smoked it. <laughs> Best look at 68 that we saw last night. Yeah. Just beyond the diving Derek Dieter. Even Mattingly said, yeah, Gordon probably can make that play with his quickness. 
Dietrich not bad. Help this club and he's going to play a lot of second base here for the next over the next 79 games. That was game one of 80. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's not just the offense that they're going to miss from D Gordon. That's a that's a killer. That guy he led the league in hitting last year in hits talking about D Gordon. Yeah gold Glover. In addition to all that offense that he brought right. An eventful last couple of days for the Marlins and they are winning in the meantime six straight. Game last game of the series against the Dodgers was a night game out on the West Coast so they got in early yesterday morning there's a ground ball to Echeverria very good shortstop inning over but the Brewers pull even here in the first Domingo Santana with a rip off the boards in left center starts the inning and then Ryan Braun brings him home on a ground ball one one after one. Marlins even at one Chase Anderson gave up a first pitch home run and needed 31 to get through the first inning but has to be pleased with the response to strand the bases loaded and Anderson is looking to return to form from his first two starts where he began the season going 11 innings without an earned run and over his last two he's allowed 10 runs in just nine innings and Anderson said that in his first two starts he just felt more in sync mechanically like he was just letting the ball work on its own and he said over the last two he's just been looking for a feel for those pitches and not pitching with conviction so he said tonight he just wants to get back to that point of pitching his own game and uh, playing to his strengths. Struggled in the first gave up a leadoff homer. But then bounced back and got out of a bases loaded jam getting a ground out from JT Real Muto so it was a, a tough first inning but could have been worse and now we'll see Sophia mentioned see if he can start to get that feel back and get some semblance of rhythm here moving forward. Yeah fastball was pretty good as the inning went on but uh, change up he's having problems with that pitch. Now when you throw you know 91 92 tops you got to be able to use all three of your pitches just about any time and that's been the issue with Anderson his last couple of starts first two starts he had everything working for him I mean dotting the outside corner pitching in every so often but you know, he doesn't have that location getting behind the count he's not going to get those swings out of the strike zone. That's a Berea with a drive left center field and that is gone. They let off the first with a long ball. They lead off the second with just the same. Danny Echeverria, his second home run of the year. And a bullet out of here into the Brewers bullpen. And that coming on a 1 2 pitch. Let's check it out. Four seam fastball and just missed his spot. You can see Luke Corey reaching back over the plate for it. 
down the middle and he hits it out of here. Now Wei in Chen the pitcher steps in. So the Marlins get the lead right back. Derek Dietrich Homer in the first. Danny Echevarria here in the second. Chen looking for his first career hits and he will have to wait another at bat. Not on strikes for the first out of the inning. Second strikeout for Chase Anderson. And here's Derek Dietrich. This was the very first pitch of the night. And no doubt about it. Yeah, hammered that one out of here. And, you know, Chase Sanders just trying to settle in, throws one down the middle. And every so often you figure the guy's going to take one just to settle into the game. But he hit it a ton to right. And with that one swing, he has become a 300 hitter. Here as we near the end of this month. Twenty six year old infielder can play third. He's over at second tonight. Top three in the lineup over 300. Matter of fact Prado touched 400 last night at one point. Yes he did. Three oh pitch to Dietrich. Dietrich was a second round draft pick by the Tampa Bay Rays back in 2010. And Anderson has just walked his third hitter of the night and we are just in the second inning. Hey tomorrow kids eat free at Miller Park all kids 14 and under in attendance for tomorrow's game against the Marlins will get a free lunch courtesy of pick and say Blue Bunny and Heinz. Now that's a deal. Is it hot dog, yeah, right? Yeah, Bottled absolutely. water, apple slices, and an ice cream treat. Those guys are going to want to be right back here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Can't beat that. Superhero night tonight. Kids eat free tomorrow. Did you bring your cape? I didn't see it. No, you you, you didn't give it back. <laughs> That's right. It's at the cleaners. I had it in Chicago. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah. Got rained out there, you know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice one. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. All one pitch to Martin Prado and blocked by Lucroy. Yeah, Lucroy taking these struggles with his pitching set very personally. He's been grinding, he's been spending a lot of time. In the video room, trying to figure out the scouting report with these guys, along with Derek Johnson, everybody else for that matter, finding ways to help these guys get through games. And that's a big responsibility the catcher has and feels on a daily basis. When pitchers are throwing well, they feel a part of that as well. Prado in the air, right field, and that will fall into foul territory. And Aaron Hill wins himself another friend. And Hill at second tonight, and uh, he's spent most of his career as a second baseman. Yeah, getting his first appearance as a Brewer over there in the regular season, but you're right, the vast majority of his career at second. He's turned in some very good work defensively over a third in this first month for the crew. It's a hot shot back up the middle. And the Marlins. Continuing to go to work against Chase Anderson. Runners at first and second with one out. Another one two count. Another one two pitch. One ball, two strikes down the middle. And Prado right back through the middle. Hit it hard. That's a Maria hit his home run on a one two pitch. Fastball. Quick trip to the mound. Trying to get things straightened out here for the Brewers starter. A 
coach talked about the troubles with this rotation and trying to get an answer to it. Here's Christian Yelich. You see his batting average, top five in the National League. His on base percentage is at 469 coming into the game. Only Dexter Fowler of the Cubs is better. Dietrich getting back. Dietrich at second. Martin Prado at first. And you see here in the top of the second with one out and Anderson approaching 50 pitches. Chase misses with a curve. Yelich comes in. You mentioned that the on base percentage the batting average he has reached in all 22 games this season. Yeah walked in his third plate appearance last night. Brewers kept him off the hit column. 1-0 pitch. There's that change up got it for a strike right on the corner. Anderson trying to get that command back that he showed against the Astros of the Cardinals. Fortunately, this night, at least very early, resembling more of the games against the Twins and the Phillies. Ball two strikes now to the Marlins left fielder. It can come and go very quickly. I mean, he had a rough spring training in his first two starts. Very, very good. And falling back into a spot where he just can't locate his pitches very well. Fastballs, curveballs, changeups, and that's a very lonely feeling out there. Not just for Chase Anderson, but for Lucroy trying to call a game for him. Difficult to set up hitters when you're inconsistent. There's that change up down in the dirt. You'd rather have it down there, I guess, than up in the up in the hitter's eyes where you can get a good swing at it. Maybe the topic of confidence comes up so much if it's in baseball or any sport. Anderson among those starters trying to get it back. Craig Council was saying you have to have it in you and you, they all do. You have to have a certain level of it to get to the big leagues. And now some of these guys including Chase Anderson trying to regain some of that and as Sophia mentioned just trying to regain the feel out there on the mound. But it's really tested when you're struggling at this level. It really is for a hitter for a pitcher. Even defensively, it starts to get into your head a little bit. You feel like every time you throw one down or over the plate, they're gonna they're gonna hit it hard somewhere. And there is another walk. That's the fourth now given up by Anderson, and the bases are loaded for the cleanup hitter, Giancarlo Stanton. Yep. Yep. And Derek Johnson on his way out to uh, try and do what he can to help. Jay Sanderson throws some strikes. You can see that last pitch for Anderson. I mean, look where he was setting up in outside and he threw it. It might have been close to the inside corner, but you have to reach across the entire width of the plate a lot of times. You're not going to get that call. Tough situation here for Anderson and the Brewers. Marlins with a couple of solo homers. Now here in the second they have the bases loaded with one out. And here's John Carlos Stanton. He comes to town on a hot streak. Did not play last night but over his last five games he has homered four times as Anderson starts Stanton off with a strike on a fastball. Yeah got the night off the Marlins got into Milwaukee yesterday morning at about 7 a.m. In from L.A. they had a night game the night before. The other starter got here in advance which is not unusual by any stretch Adam Conley but. Everybody else was long flight quick turn. The one one you know what usually happens when the starter goes ahead. 
ends up going two innings. <laughs> Gets shelled. And then the bullpen has to eat up the rest of the game. But didn't happen last night. Conley was on point. Two balls, one strike for the Marlins right fielder with the bases loaded. Mentioned he has a big contract. Big is an understatement. He is signed through 2027. It was a 13 year, $325 million deal for Stanton. That works. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That uh, kind of money is uh, mind boggling. It is. And that long of a contract too. So I guess uh, if you're going to give a contract to a guy it's a young outfielder that uh, hits a lot of home runs. Twenty six years old. Out of Sherman Oaks California another full count. And he got him swinging on the change up. Big, big out right there for Chase Anderson. Best change up he's thrown tonight, and it couldn't come at a better time. Down in the strike zone, it was off the plate, not a strike, and Santon you know, goes after it. What Stanton bend the knees to try to get down after it, but just can't do it. Good pitch by Chase Anderson. He needed that. And now he'll square off against Justin Bohr, who's singled to right in the first. Marlin stranded three in that first inning. And they have him loaded right now, but Anderson got a strikeout. Now he deals with Bohr. And the count is even. Bohr originally drafted by the Cubs back in 09. Looks like he has found a home though in South Florida. Break even pitch. There's a drive to right, but plenty of room for Santana. And the inning is over. Once again, a solo homer. Once again, the Marlins strand three. Ballpark. Here is Chris Carter. Let's see if the Brewers can get the bats going. Let's check out the home run powerball count. 16 of them here at Miller Park for the crew this season. 16 of the 20 home runs so far have been right here in Milwaukee. Well, that's a good hitter's ballpark. Guys feel comfortable here and 
They could use a few tonight. Chin has been giving up some home runs. He's got given up four home runs in his first four starts. He gave up 28 a year ago in 191 of the third innings. And there's a bouncing ball to Adani Echeverria. And there's out number one. Here's Colin Walsh. His first big league RBI last night. Part of that ninth inning rally that the Brewers put together. You see that batting average, but there's a little more to it, to uh, the work of Walsh here in this month of April because of his ability to draw walks, which he brought with him from the minor leagues, the Rule 5 pick. His on base percentage is 379. Yeah, very patient at the play. That's uh, a combination is unusual. You don't get hits, but you walk a lot. I mean, normally when you swing at nothing but strikes, you're going to get hits. Hasn't been the case quite yet for Colin. Getting the starting call at third tonight for Milwaukee. And he came up with a nice base hit last night in the ninth inning. And sliced one out into left field. That's what was. Among the encouraging parts of that game, although the Brewers fell short, it was who was involved in extending that game with the likes of Alex Presley and Ramon Flores, mentioned Walsh, Kirk Neuenheis, strong a walk. There's another chance for Etchevarria. Very good shortstop, and it's dug out by Bohr, two up, two down here in the second. Hey Brewer fans, if you can't watch the games on TV, you can now stream games live on your mobile device. Just go to your app store and download the free Fox Sports Go app. Log in and stream the Brewers wherever you go. Two outs and the base is empty. Aaron Hill settles in. Get that bat alive here is the veteran. Good with the glove and now trying to get it going at the plate. A ball and strike. And it's going to be interesting to see what Craig Council does with the second base spot. You got Yadiel Rivera, Perez, Colin Walsh. There's a fly ball hit back in the left field. Yelich going back and near the wall makes the catch. And the Brewers are retired in order. And we are through two at Miller Park. That, that that game happening is such a special time for our team. Yeah. 
we we gone on to win 12 games in a row. Uh, I know we we barely made it in the end. We had a chance to win, uh, and that, that to me that's the most important part to be able to get in the playoffs and win it all. But uh, that was quite an exciting time. A lot of things were happening, and uh, I thought it brought the team a young team a combination with a lot of veteran players. Where that was an exciting time. Yeah. That was a lot of fun watching that interview and in Brewers live and you see a clip of it there rock. It's a conversation you have with Juan Nieves. Yeah. Uh, good man Juan Nieves a very highly respected pitching coach in baseball and did some good work with the uh, the Red Sox in 2013. Won a World Series actually the uh, bullpen coach with the White Sox when they won their World Series he's got two rings. I don't want to correct Juan at the time but we won 13 in a row. <laughs> We lost 12 in a row in That's May. That's true. Yes. Yeah. Team streak. It was a fun conversation. There will be more where that came from tomorrow on Brewers Live as a sharp ground ball and Carter unable to come up with it. And Marcelo Zuna will reach to begin the third. And once again, the leadoff man getting on base. A couple of home runs in the uh, first two innings. And then that will be ruled a base hit for Ozuna here in the third. Go back to 1987. And you could see this yeah, when all that, day long. Yeah, when that ball was first hit, I thought it was going to be right at Robin, but the wind was blowing, the ball was slicing away from him, and uh, Robin ultimately made the diving catch. He was asked if he needed to dive on that baseball, but he said, There's no way I was going to miss it, so I just dove and made the catch. There was a number of great plays in that game, and Juan had incredible stuff. I mean, you can only imagine what he might have been able to do. In the major leagues, had he not hurt his shoulder, a very short career, but uh, I'll tell you, a terrific pitching coach. Did you have a feel early in the game? I don't know if he, if that would even be possible, but I'll, I'll throw it out there. Here's Real Muto getting into one center field, and that's going to go off the wall. Ozuna turns third. He's going to head home. Here's the relay to the plate, and he is safe at home. And that terrific throw out there to make it close. And uh, Pat Murphy right away wants the video crew in the clubhouse to take a look at it. Ozuna on his horse, and uh, this is a heck of a play. Remember, you can't block the plate anymore. And Luke Croy got him on the back. Question is, where's the hand? You get a better look at it here. Tag on the back, and it's late. That's a good call at home plate. You can't really see the tag there. You see the hand. That second look was the best. RBI double for JT Real Muto, and it makes it a 3 1 lead now for the Marlins. Here's Echeverria. And to answer your question, you know, about the Nieves no hitter, you knew he had great stuff. It was a rotten night, you know, cold and raining. So very similar to the night we had, nights we had in Chicago. <laughs> Hopefully a little warmer, but it had an explosive night. fastball. Not only was he tough to hit, tough to catch. The ball was moving all over the place and darting and sinking and cutting and doing a lot of different things. And very similar to last night's pitcher for the Marlins, Conley did it predominantly with the fastball. Juan Nieves, a brewer for three years at 87 season, the middle of the three, a diving stop by Colin Walsh, and the throw to first is in time. Nice play by the third baseman. Yep, angling back nicely and now able to get his man, Echeverria. Gets it into glove, able to bounce up, and a good strong throw to first. You know, Colin had struggled a little bit defensively, but made a nice play right there. Chase Anderson appreciates it. And that was what you were going to ask me, right? Did yes. I know right away? Yes. You never know if a guy's going to throw a no hitter. You right. knew he had great stuff, and you know, based on the kind of night it was, I mean, yeah, you know, just like Chicago, guys, guys don't like to hit in weather like that. It was the pitcher way in Chen as it's bobbled by VR, and the throw to first is not in time. Well, he's thinking about going to third base, yep. and I think that's what uh, ultimately why he committed the error. Check it out. Trying to be quick. 
He had it but slipped out of his hand then he said I better go to first but the pitcher Chen able to beat it. That'll be an E6. I think. Looks like they may rule that a hit. And if that's the case that would be the first hit in the big leagues for Wei in Chen. Either way it's more trouble here for the crew. Here's a hit hit number seven for Miami. One out here in the inning is once again the Marlins have scored. They have scored in each of the first three. Wei in Chen getting his first hit at this level. Now one for 16. Back to the top of the order in Derek Dietrich. First pitch of the game he launched one over the wall and there's actually been a change in that scoring decision. Tell me it's it an is, error. It is an error. E6. I thought I had lost complete uh. <laughs> understanding of what a hit and an error is. Yeah, that's an error. Yes. I mean, that's a definition of an error right there. Mm -hmm. I tried to be quick with it to get the lead out, get the real Muto going to third base. He lost the handle and wasn't able to get anybody. Going to third would have been a good play. Yes. The ball just popped out. And now Dietrich with a ground ball, diving stop there in the hill. They'll get the play at first. A run will score. A nice play by Hill to prevent a base hit. Still an RBI for Dietrich and. They get a four to one lead now for Miami. They're just pecking away in this inning. Infield hit, base hit the center in E6, and now a ground ball to score the third run. I should say fourth run for the Marlins. Nice play by Aaron Hill. Still showing some pretty good range out there at second base. Continuing the good work with the glove. Here's Martin Prado. He took a called third strike in the first single to center last inning already the third time through for this Marlins batting order and we are in inning number three. Lotto now 11 for his last 20. The last five plus games. In the air. Right field and it will slip through untouched. And Santana Carter and Hill there it's no play. Now he knew it was going to be a tough play for Carter and Hill just a matter of whether if Santana was going to be able to get there just come up a little bit short. So another opportunity for Martin Prado. The pitcher Wei Yin Chen is the runner at second. Four runs on six hits here for Miami. Mentioned Prado's hot streak here he just came off the paternity list and that's when the hitting streak started his uh, as a baby girl Martina Luciana was born one week ago he joined the club three days later fly ball to right Santana near the line will make the catch and the inning is over but another productive inning for the Marlins two more runs and they lead it four to one.
lead with Ramon Flores leading off this third inning for the Brewers and Craig Council said that with uh, Flores you know he has just a 136 average over 18 games including 12 starts so he says just a month into the season it's tough to say whether it's still a slow start for him but really believes that there is still more in there than what Flores has shown at the plate. He said there have been times that he has not swung well or looked comfortable at the plate but believes that his strength he's shown at the minor league level that he has the ability to have be a high average hitter. He's not going to show a lot of power a lot of raw power. He can hit the gaps hit for doubles but uh, has yet to show that here at the major league level but overall council said they like what he's done defensively believes that he tracks balls well makes good defensive plays so they're hoping they can get him going with more opportunities here. Yeah, Sophia, hopefully last night that ninth inning was the start of something for him. He had an RBI double part of that three run ninth when the Brewers went from nearly being no hit to nearly winning the game or at least being in position to to tie it. Flores was among those who kept the game going. Yeah, ripped one down the right field line to keep the line moving and he's always hitting the minor leagues a 275 hitter on average. Yeah, had a 302 batting average one year back in 2012. Got a sweet swing. Just got to get the confidence at this level. There's a ground ball to Echeverria, the shortstop. And there's out number one. Yeah, but that's what uh, this season is about for the Brewers to see what they have going forward. They're going to have a lot of young players, some opportunities, give them. Some extensive playing time to see you know, how they respond, who's going to be able to do it, who is not. So this is the kind of you know, player that the Brewers are going to give a good look to. You know, guys like Perez, guys like Rivera, you know, the list goes on and on. And a lot of the pitchers as well. There's Chase Anderson. Looking for his first hit here in 2016. The Marlins have touched him up here with runs in the first three innings, solo homers in innings one and two, and then they put two more on the board in the top half of this third inning. Man, just playing from behind too much lately. Long on and miss got him on a curveball and two up two down here in the third. It's the first strikeout for Wei in Chen. So he had some very productive years with the Orioles. Rock talked about it had a 16 and 6 record in 2014 last year won 11 games and a good solid earned run average. 31 starts each of the last two years as he faces Domingo Santana. And Chen, in some ways similar to Adam Conley, he likes to get it and go. It's right back on the mound. Showing a lot of confidence. I mean, that's what happens when you have confidence in what you're throwing and you're you and the catcher on the same page. Get it and go. Don't have to worry about what, it, what he's calling, just execute your pitches. Durable the last two years. The year before in 2013 did have some injury issues. It limited him to 23 starts, but 31 plus three of the last four for the Orioles. So they had a, a, a deal last June. The ERA was good, but the team sent him to the minors. I thought he might have been showing signs of fatigue. Shen wasn't real happy about it. They're getting ready to face the Blue Jays. A very Heavy hitting team. Right back up and man yeah, one with a 334 ERA. Yeah, one start. Went down to the minor leagues for one start, came back. You now in the American League with the Orioles, he had a 46 and 32 record. That was four years with Baltimore with a 372 earned run average. Talking to Nieves before the ball game, and he says he works four quadrants of the plate extremely well. Doesn't throw hard. Knows how to pitch, has a good feel for pitching. And gives up a walk, and he doesn't give up many of those. Here's the first of the night issued by Wei Yin Chen. 
And only the fourth walk issued by Chen so far this year. So you're right, didn't walk many. Domingo Santana reaching for the second time. Here's Jonathan VR laid down a sack bunt in the first. Helped set up the first run of the night for the Brewers. Santana led off with a double. VR moved him to third, and then Braun brought him in with a ground ball to second. Back to the fastball for Chen. VR with five stolen bases this year, three of them coming on Thursday afternoon against the Cubs. And feeding him fastballs here and is out in front two strikes and nothing. Yeah, he's uh, upset with himself missing that pitch. That was a good one to hit. Pretty straight. And fouled it straight back. He was on it, but just a little bit behind. Chen aware that the Brewers have been trying to run here a little bit. Not that the opportunities were plentiful last night, but they were trying to be aggressive against Jake Arrieta when they had the chances on Thursday. A stretch of games here without a day off, but it's been a, a choppy week for the Brewers. They had a scheduled off day on Monday, the rain out on Wednesday. The next scheduled off day doesn't come until after the middle of May series here at Miller Park against the San Diego Padres. The rhythm of the season. Yeah, and what that means is the starting pitching better start ending up some innings. That bullpen is going to be in rough shape with no days off, and nobody knows that more than Craig Council. Got to start eating up innings to give these guys out there. Some time off. They've been pretty good this year, but they have worked a lot. Yesterday, Blaine Boyer, David Goforth just called up, came in, is going down swinging as Jonathan VR. A couple of strikeouts here in the third for William Chan. It's 4 1, Miami. Let's take a look at the last triple play not last night but the one before five years ago against the Dodgers not one you see every day last night around the horn there's a little different nice throw Prince there's Kataris with a tag. And there's last night. Aaron nice. Hill, Rivera to Carter. Yeah, nice play by Rivera to make that turn at second base and 
The first triple play in the National League this year. Christian Yelich. Who turned the triple play? It took about seven throws. The uh, the White Sox yeah, White against Sox, the Rangers. Yeah. yeah, you saw Prince complete that for the Brewers five years ago. He was on the other end <laughs> of the uh, yeah of the lengthy triple play. Questionable base running, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got, got hung up a little bit between third and home. That's a diplomatic way to say. It, you got yeah. to admit, questionable <laughs> base running, yes. indecisive. It was uh, it was very very politically correct. Here's Aaron Hill and he makes the play at first for out number one. He showed you the highlight of that triple play from five years ago. Uh, let's check in with Sophia. I think uh, they, the question that the recollection the recall of counsel maybe was uh, brought up today before the game Sophia. Yes indeed it was. Well, as you can imagine that triple play coming up with a certain former uh, infielder Mr. Craig Council and he uh, we asked him about that last triple play in 2011 he said you know I saw that there were two while I was supposedly here on the team and I don't remember either one of them so he said I guess I wasn't involved but um, he said certainly the one last night he said was about as tailor made as you could have to go around the horn but said he didn't realize how good the turn was by Yadiel Rivera until he saw the replay. Yeah well, it was impressive. Uh, you would think if uh, you were part of a triple play or even if you were in the building for a triple play you would remember it. but if you're a manager maybe you have other things in yeah, your mind right. now. OK. Going to go with that and here's Giancarlo Stanton and he just crushed one to left field bangs it off the board as in scoreboard as he got all of it and that's his fifth homer in his last six games. Well Anderson struck him out on a 3 2 change up and I figured that Stan was up there looking for it again he got it a change up and he hit it a ton hit it a mile. An amazing strength Giancarlo Stanton right off the corner of the scoreboard and a no doubter. He has hit some mammoth home runs. Wow. That is the third homer tonight for the Marlins, all solo shots. And the red hot bat continues for Giancarlo Stanton. Derek Dietrich homered to start the game. But Danny Echevarria homered in the second. And now Stanton here in the fourth. Five to one, Miami. Four. Goes the other way down the left field line, and that is just foul. Yeah, I'd smile too, I guess, yeah. if I hit one F on. Yeah, incredible power. I mean, he has great power to all fields. We showed you earlier the home run that he hit against Clayton Kershaw in LA to right center. Hit one where left handed pull hitters, the big guys, hit him. That's how strong he is. Good leverage. This turn has turned himself into a terrific player. That change that takes care of Justin Bohr, two men out here in the fourth. That home run, by the way, estimated at 462 feet. The guys around him are telling how far it went. How do you hit him that far? He just kind of shakes his head, smiles. <laughs> yep. Up off the TMJ sign. It's a matter of time before Chris Carter does that here. And here's Marcelo Zuna with a fly to left field, but there's room for Ryan Braun, and the inning is over. Marlins, though, continue to score. They have done so in each of the first four innings. A solo blast from Giancarlo Stanton. As the Marlins now increase their lead, it's 5 1 Miami.
It's my my X Men knowledge is very limited, but that's Mystique Rock. Yeah, I'm told. Well, you were told too. Don't have to pretend like you knew. <laughs> Five to one as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Multi platinum pop star Andy Grammer is coming to Miller Park on Saturday, May 14th, to perform a free post game concert courtesy of Pick and Save. Follow the Brewers. Following the Brewers matchup with the Padres, reserve your spot today at Brewers.com slash concerts. There's nothing like getting laughed at by the truck because we don't know our X-Men. We I, have no I, X-Men no, knowledge. Didn't, I didn't know. I haven't seen no. it. No. No. <laughs> Ryan Braun lines one down the line foul. Superhero night. Seeing some variety here at the ballpark. Got one right below us. I think it's a Spider-Man outfit. I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, I think that I think that is true. Appreciate the effort, man. That's yeah. That's a, it's a lot of work to get dressed up. It's a commitment. Yeah. Two balls, one strike to Ryan Braun. He's responsible for that first Brewer run, RBI, and a ground out to second base, and there's a base hit to center for Braun. He tried to come in on him, and Braun able to fight it off in the center field. Lead off single, and here comes Jonathan Lucroy. Brings us to our carsuit.com trivia question. Who was the last Brewers hitter to break up a no hitter in the ninth inning? Before last night, we right. broke it up in right. the ninth inning. He was the last Brewers hitter before Luke to break up a no hitter in the ninth inning. I think I know this one. I think I have a pretty good idea too. Curve ball for strike one. I think it was against Seattle. It's not much of a hint, but yeah. well, it's a little. It's if, a little it's what, if it's who I think it is in the situation that I think it is, it was Seattle. I think I called it a line drive last night. Very soft line. Otherwise known as a bloop. Probably making fun of himself after the game, but hey, it hits a hit. Yeah. The box score, it was a screamer. There's a bouncing ball to Ed to Berea. That's trouble. That's one and that's two. Six, four, three. It's a Berea, Dietrich to Justin Bohr, and there are two men out. And change up from 10. He's got off all of his pitches working for him. The breaking pitch, change up, fast ball. He's been spotting it pretty well. Roughed up a little in his first outing against the Tigers. Pretty good sense. And now he'll face Chris Carter. Carter a ground ball to short. He's back in the second inning. Echeverria has been busy tonight. Slick fielding shortstop for Miami. Ball two strikes to Carter. Top 10 in slugging percentage coming into this game tonight. Better than 600. 345 on base percentage coming into the game. Like to see him, like you mentioned, get a hold of one like Stanton. Well, with him, you, you have to figure it's when and not if. Right. You know, he can he can go the other way, and he has already shown that ability quite a bit. He's only pulled one of his home runs. Everything else is center and right. Three-two pitch, and Carter draws a walk. Yeah. 
That's the second one now given up by Chen. Washington's been good this year, only four coming into the game. It's been a part of the storyline in his big league career, Wei in Chen. The good control. Here's Colin Walsh. Grounded to short in the second inning. That slow curve, check it out, 68. Yep, 68 miles an hour with a big curveball. Change ups coming in about 83. Fastball topping out at about 91. Faced the Brewers a couple of years ago in an Orioles uniform to Chen. Brewers banged him around a little bit. Hit three homers in that game, gave up five runs and five innings of work. And Chen, the opening day star for the Marlins this year. He had a no decision against the Tigers, a game that the Tigers went on to win. One and one record coming in. Walsh fights that off and grounds to Justin Bohr. And that'll do it here for the Brewers in the fourth. No runs on a hit. They leave one. It remains 5 1 Miami. Brewers 5 to 1 and you can join Brewers pitcher Matt Garza and his teammates for the Brewers Bowlathon on Sunday August 14th. You can enjoy a silent auction and bowling with the Brewers players while raising money for the Meta House which offers substance abuse treatment services to help women reclaim their lives from the effects of drugs or alcohol. To register be sure to visit Brewers.com slash bowling or you can call 414-902-4581. A quick update on Matt Garza. He began throwing yesterday, a pretty significant step for him as he seeks to recover from his right lat strain, which has him on the 60-day disabled list. He'll throw every other day uh, for the next week or so. He says it's a slow process. Feels like he's on a pit bull on a leash with the training staff trying to hold him back, but uh, hopeful that he'll be pitching by early June. All right, Sophia, thanks. Yeah, that was the, the injury that occurred in the exhibition. Right before the regular season began, the Friday before, they were in Houston. Exhibition game against the Astros. And that was the last we saw of Matt Garza on the mound. JT Real Muto trying to leg it out, but Walsh not having it. There's out number one. Yeah, pretty close. I tell you, catcher getting down there pretty good. Donnie Baseball wants to take a look. Yep. Yeah. That's what I thought. I mean, that was a pretty close play. They took a look at it down in the clubhouse.
Yep, safe. Yep. Yep. I thought that was a pretty close play, and it looked like on a replay that he's going to be safe. And a base hit. Man, that's a play that just has to be made. I mean, that's a two hopper to third, and I know that uh, Walsh was playing, you know, back, but the Marlins catcher getting down to first base in a big hurry. Pretty good speed for a catcher. I can't imagine this is going to take too long. No, I wouldn't think. Erwin Danley is the crew chief for the first base tonight, and that was a fairly easy one. Yeah, Real Muto all the way in the dugout. He goes back to first. He gets, it goes from an out to a base hit. Yep, clearly safe. Not even close. Twenty-five-year-old catcher J.T. Real Muto. It's up the line, adds himself an infield hit. That is hit number eight now for Miami. Here's that to Berea, who homered in the second inning. One of three Marlins to go deep tonight. They have all been solo shots. That was a good curveball. He hit a Fastball out of the ballpark on a one two count. And Chase Anderson needs to be able to get through this inning with nothing on the board. He's due third in the bottom of the fifth. There's Chris Capuano getting loose. Marlins have scored in each of the first four innings. There's a snap throw down the first, but Real Muto gets back. Trying to do anything he can to help pitchers through innings. Maybe pick a guy off. You know, Muto with a big lead over there at first. Tried to get him. And that's a Berea shoots one into right field. And the first two Marlins get aboard here in inning number five. Nine hits already for. Miami pitch count close to 100 now for Chase Anderson. 95. Nobody out in the fifth. He needed 99 in the four innings he worked last Saturday against the Phillies. And 96 to get through five against the Twins at Target Field in the start before. It was Wei and Chen reached on an error. It was originally ruled a hit, but then changed to an error. And now Chen lays one down. Anderson make the play at first. Out number one, but a good bunt. Real Muto to third. It's Avaria to second. Well, two of the next three hitters are left-handed for. You know the Marlins you got Capuano up in the bullpen. Let's see if Craig Council wants to make a move. You got Dietrich a left hander Prado the right hander you'll have first base open perhaps and then you got Yelich coming up. Nothing yet from the dugout Jonathan Lucroy was out to talk with Chase Anderson. Derek Johnson your right side there's his manager next to him Pat Murphy left side of your screen and they bought enough time and now the move will be made. So this Capuano given a few extra seconds to get some more throws in the bullpen and now Craig Council is going to go ahead and make the move as a double switch coming up. Yeah Colin Walsh uh, made the last out in the fourth it might be him that leaves the ball game and a double switch. They're breaking the action the Marlins with a four run lead they are threatening for more as Chris Capuano coming in for the crew.
Milwaukee Brewers baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by T-Mobile. Get major league coverage. T-Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE since 2015. And by Hubie and Abraham, 1-800-800-5678. Hubie and Abraham, tell them you mean business. Unfortunately for Chase Anderson, an ineffective start again. The first two outings were good. The next three, not nearly as good. In fact, very much the other direction. Four and a third inning tonight. The four and a third innings, excuse me. Now he makes way for Chris Capuano. Yeah, last pitched on Thursday against the Cubs. Gave up a run in an inning of work. He had some control issues. Three walks, but inherited three. Or stranded three inherited base runners. You see his numbers overall. Yeah, the base on ball has been an issue for him. Nine walks, ten strikeouts, and 12 and a third so far for Cappy. He will face Derek Dietrich. Homer to lead off the game. Sent the first pitch over the wall in right. Aaron Perez, part of that double switch, as he is in at third base for Colin Walsh. Marlins have him at second and third with one out. Brewers have the infield in. Capuano out in front, no balls, two strikes. And once again, that Brewers bullpen being called upon early. Yep, that's why they have eight down in that bullpen. Goforth, David Goforth was uh, called up. Yesterday after Taylor Youngman was sent to the minor league so eight relievers for now until they need another starter on Tuesday. No balls two strikes to the Marlins second baseman Derek Dietrich. That is strike three call. Big punch out for Capuano. Yeah, perfect on the outside corner. Fastball away. Fastball in and fastball away. Gets him on three pitches. And let's see what they do with Prado here. You got first base open. Nice job of holding it there by Luke Croy and gets the strikeout. Now you walk Prado here and then go after the lefty. Yep. So they'll go lefty lefty the Yelich a hot hitter but a little more of playing the percentages here as Prado will get the pass and that will load the bases Yelich is hot but not nearly as hot as Prado and he's right handed and Prado with a hit tonight he has three hits in each of his last three games. Now if you look at the splits this year for Yelich it's been very good in 13 at bats against left handed pitching in fact, better than 500 but 13 at bats seven for 13 in that stretch this season for Yelich against lefties. So the Marlins have the bases loaded with two men out. Capuano will try to keep the fish off the board here for the first inning tonight. Single runs in innings one, two, and four, and two on the board in the third. When Yelich walked in the second inning, that means he's reached in each of the 23 games this season. And you see the splits this year for Yelich. Hangs right in there, keeps that front shoulder closed, and uh, uses left field very effectively. And it's two balls, no strikes. And 
is for Capuano the splits this year much better against lefties hitting 238 against him as opposed to 308 against right handed hitters. Yelich goes the other way down the line and left and that'll slice out of play. Yeah Capuano went with a slider on a 2 0 count. Big moment here still. We hit the midway portion of this game. Yeah, third time that the Marlins have had the bases loaded. Third different inning, I should say. Yeah. They have stranded seven so far. And a three and one counts to Christian Yelich. It's John Carlos Stanton. Which means that Yelich is probably going to get something pretty good to hit here. Uh -huh. You would think. Stanton went deep his last at bat. Huge pitch coming up here for Chris Capuano. Here it comes. And that's strike two called. Now they're all going to be on the move. Capuano against Yelich. Chase Anderson went four and a third, gave up nine hits, five runs, four of which were earned. Responsible for two of the runners on base now as Yelich stays alive. Seems to be more comfortable throwing the breaking pitch for strikes than the fastball. Cap, you want to miss with the fastball, but the slider has been in there for strikes. Craig Council again turning to his veteran. Come out of the bullpen. Turned in some very good years his first go round as a brewer trying to get his team out of a mess here in the fifth three two pitch. He walked him and that will force in a run. Man missed with the fastball right. And it uh, has been a pitch that he's. Been struggling with tonight to throw for strike didn't miss by much just off that outside corner. Another run in. So the Marlins continue to score in every inning. And now Giancarlo Stanton. Who drilled one 462 feet. In the fourth inning. Here's how it looked. Change up. Anderson knew it. Struck him out when I changed up the at bat before, but Stanton looking for that one. Oh, one pitch. Capuano ahead, two strikes and nothing. Stanton struck out in the second inning and he walked in the first to go along with that home run. His last at bat is eighth of the year. And 19 RBIs for the right fielder. Capuano with the 0 2. Another one of the bright young players in this game, Giancarlo Stanton. Here comes the one two that is ripped to short VR on a hop and the inning is over. The Marlins have stranded ten here. And the lead is five for Miami.
the Brewers as we move to the home half of the fifth inning here at Miller Park. Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with Surfrider Foundation in celebration of this month's Every Day is Earth Day initiative. By making simple changes in our daily lives, we can make a big impact on our environment. Go to FoxSportsSupports.com to learn more about what you can do to be a part of the solution. We said all night great effort by so many of the fans here in Superhero Night. It's a lot of work to get yourself that pretty. Yeah. Come to the ballpark. Take some time. Uh huh. You know what? You know, if you're gonna do it, go all the way. Exactly right. right. Yeah. Don't go halfway. Go big or go home. That's right. That's right. Aaron Hill leading off the bottom of the fifth. Fly ball to left his first trip in the second inning. His way in Shen rolling along and another chance for Echeverria. Out number one. Yeah, he's done a good job has Chen keeping the ball on the ground. There's a one fly ball out. Seems like that's all it's been. Yep the fly ball from Hill back in the seventh in, uh, second inning. Six chances for Echeverria. Here's Ramon Flores taking a look at a curveball. One and one the count. Marlins with a six game winning streak coming into this game. Evening their record. 11 up and 11 down trying to go better than 500 for the first time in a couple of years. We mentioned this is a team that has traveled very well in the month of April of their 11 wins only two are at Marlins Park. They are nine and four away from home including this six game run they're on now. Flores with a liner to third and Prado is there. That's the way it goes, right? Hit the ball hard and they had him positioned perfectly. Well, tonight's time of the game winner, partner. Parkside Pub in McFarland. That's not far from you. That's is it? close to home, man. That is close right. to home. You've been there? I'm going soon. <laughs> if they call the Brewers by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, they get 40 tickets to a Friday night game in the Miller Lite beer pen. It's all for courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite McFarland, Wisconsin. Yeah, just a little, little south of Madison. They take care of us over there. Not bad. You know, I hope. Nice town. Yeah. Hernan Perez. Defensive replacement, part of a double switch in the fifth inning. And that Madison area is uh, pretty popular with the Brewers broadcasters. You, Craig? That's right. Sophia's yeah. from there. Absolutely. Up in that yeah. neck of the woods, not necessarily Madison, but Sophia's father, football coach over at Edgewood High School. Been doing that for a long time and doing it very, very well. Yeah. And Craig is just he's kind of the mayor of the Madison area. You know, he just everybody knows Craig. Long time just Madison. TV anchor. Well, the area well, and surrounding it. Yeah. Really, it's extended now to Milwaukee. Yeah, I was going to say I was walking down with Craig in a concourse mm -hmm. for the pregame. Wow. Yeah. Everybody knows him. <laughs> going to need security. After five, it's six one Marlins.
It's superhero night. The Marlins have a six to one lead and from dynamic duo Matt and Rock to Batman and Robin. We've got all the duos here in the house. We check in with the Brewers minor league report. How about catcher Max McDowell for the Appleton Timber Rattlers and a ball currently on a 10 game hitting streak. He's got an average of 312 hits five extra base hits and that's uh, been part of a good week for the Timber Rattlers. They've won six straight including two shutouts and that ERA 138 over their last eight games. All right, Sophia, thank you very much. Yeah, it's going to be a, a continuing storyline, I think, uh, moving forward. And it actually are, it has been. You keep tabs on all the levels of the, of the minor leagues and, and all the young talent that David Stearns, Matt Arnold, and company have uh, brought to this organization as they continue to try to build it. And most of them are a little ways away, double A, triple A. Probably see some of them uh, at some point this year. Hey, remember tonight's starter Chase Anderson that came over in the trade that involved obviously with Aaron Hill and Gene Segura being sent out to uh, the Diamondbacks. The Brewers also got a young shortstop named Isan Diaz. And he is with the Timber Rattlers now and leads the team in RBIs with 10. He's also hit a couple of home runs. Again, he's just he's at the very beginning of the of the journey if you want to call it that but he's a very highly regarded young player now in the Brewers system he was a top 10 prospect in the Diamondback system and it's the uh, the way it's been mentioned by David Stearns the young good controllable talent and that's what this organization has been very busy doing for the last several months as Justin Bohr strikes out against Chris Capuano to begin the sixth inning. Yeah, Cappy doing a pretty good job against the lefties except for the walk to Yelich. Got Dietrich on the strikeout. Now Justin Bohr on the slider. The slider has been a much better pitch for him tonight than the fastball. Has been uh, locating that pitch pretty well. One out for Marcelo Zuna. And he sends one deep into right field, and that is the fourth home run tonight for the Miami Marlins. 7 1 is the score. And they have all been no doubt home yeah, runs. Yeah, they have been hit pretty well. Ozuna going to opposite field, way back out there in right center. And uh, the one fortunate thing about the four home runs for the Marlins, they've all been solo shots. And there's a fastball, and that pitch out away from Ozuna, and nice easy swing knocks it out of here. That pitch was supposed to be inside. You can see Luke Gray reaching for it. And a big fly for Ozuna way back. Here's the catcher JT Real Muto. So the Marlins continue to get runs on the board in every inning. Four solo homers and they scored two runs. In the third inning without the benefit of a long ball. They are flexing their muscles here tonight. Yes, they are. They've been getting some pretty good pitches to hit. Except for Stanton's home run. They've all been on fastballs. Stanton hit a changeup. What did he hit it? 460? 462. A changeup. And that's the damage the Marlins have inflicted here tonight off the combination to this point of Chase Anderson and Chris Capuano. And Real Muto with a liner to the left. Braun is there. And there's out number two. That's a Barrio with one of the four home runs tonight. As he pulled one over the wall in left center. Back in the second inning. Also singled in the fifth. Part of a two for three night. For the Miami shortstop. The Brewers returned the trip to Miami 
a week from Monday. A three game series with the Marlins. Monday Tuesday and Wednesday in South Florida a week from Monday Tuesday Wednesday. They'll have four in Cincinnati first. They have uh, three night games in Miami getaway day in Florida is going to be a night game so an early arrival for the Brewers back here to the Midwest for a Thursday game here at Miller Park series with the Padres coming up part of that next home stand other games today by the way the Cubs were rained out that lousy weather continuing there in the other postponement they were to play the Braves today. Cardinals lost to the Nationals six to one. And it's a goes the other way and that's his third hit of the night. And hit number eleven for Miami. And they wasted no time tonight for yeah. swing of the night from Derek Dietrich. Yep, already 11 hits. They've left 10 stranded in the first five plus. Way in Chen. He's given up just two hits tonight through five. Reached on an error in the third. Laid down a sacrifice bunt in the fifth. Also struck out in the second. Check another scores involving the National League Central. Pirates lead the Reds three to one. They're in the bottom of the fifth in Pittsburgh. Keeping an eye on Echeverria, who has yet to steal a base. Brewers have more stolen bases than Miami. D. Gordon, prior to the suspension, obviously a base running threat. He had six stolen bases, but you take him away, which obviously is the case for the next 79 games and of their active roster, it's a grand total of four. But the way they're swinging the bats, that doesn't really matter right now. No, Combination of that and their pitching. Yeah, at this point, I mean, they, they've been swinging the bats well now for about a week, but they've got uh, their 10 for 15 in stolen bases. That's a uh, 667 percentage, if uh, my math is correct. I, I believe it is. I was not. We're not very good in math myself, but which I'm pretty sure that's right. Which isn't bad. You know, about 70 percent. That's pretty good. But with D. Gordon now, that's going to change. A ball, two strikes to Wei and Chen. And right back to the mound, and that'll do it for the Marlins. But another run on another home run. It's 7 1, Miami.
to you by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. And by the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. That is good form right there. Bottom of the sixth. And the Marlins continuing to swing the big bats. They lead the Brewers seven to one. Top of the order here for Milwaukee. Domingo Santana at the plate presented by Blaze Pizza. Santana's reached into this two at bats or plate appearances, a double in the first and scored the one run here for the Brewers, also walked in the third. Wayne Chen rolling along here for Miami. Brewers with just the two hits through the first five. Yeah, uh, Chen has only allowed one batter to reach second base or one base runner to reach second. That was that Santana double in the first. Been very stingy tonight. Santana hits it hard, but right to Stanton, and then he'll have to make the sliding catch. Like that fooled him a little bit, but he's able to make the play for out number one. Yeah, had a little sink on it, a humpback liner, and Stanton went back and then had to dig his heels in and come on in and got it right before it hit the grass. That was close. Mm. Yep. Didn't trap it, he caught it. Hard hit balls, not that they've had a ton of them, but they are being caught. And that's how it works when you're not going well. Jonathan VR. Struck out his last trip. 30 year old Wei In Chen, his first year with the Marlins. Yep, as advertised. I mean, not a hard thrower, just mixes his pitches very well. and. Yeah, it works both sides of the plate. And VR is down on strikes. Quickly two away here in the sixth. Man, reach back and give you 92 after a steady diet of pitches in the 80s. Up and away. Down and in. It's kind of the way it's been so far for Chen. Here comes Ryan Braun and here comes the Powerball home run leaderboard Chris Carter we put him at the top he and Ryan Braun each with five Scooter Jeanette on the disabled list with the oblique tightness he has four and then Domingo Santana next up with two. Keep waiting for those Brewers bats to get going they have hit a vast majority of home runs this season that they've uh, been able to get out of the park it's been here 16 of the 20. Here in Milwaukee. Nothing doing so far tonight or in this series. Adam Conley so good last night, seven and two thirds of no hit ball. And tonight it's Wei in Chen, who has given up just two hits and one run through five and two thirds. And one of the few pitches that has been called a strike down in the strike zone. Adam Hawari rings that one up, and Ryan Braun didn't like the call. One two pitch. Braun with the other of the two hits. We mentioned Santana. Braun a single in the fourth. And he's driven in the lone run for the crew on a ground ball to second in the first. Here comes a 2 2. One hopper to second. That's Dietrich. And it's a 1 2 3 inning. And we are through six at Miller Park. The Marlins lead it 7 to 1.
Here's Cricket, something to smile about. Some pretty good work with the glove. This is Colin Walsh taking a hit away from a Danny Echeverria. Nice diving stab of the Rule 5 pick for the crew. And then Aaron Hill, he too goes to the dirt. Showing some range, Aaron Hill. Able to bounce up and get a good throw over to first base. So, and good defensive plays for Colin Walsh and Aaron Hill tonight. Michael Blazik now on for Milwaukee. Well, Craig Kazem, I would imagine, prefer not to have to use the back end of his bullpen in games like this, down by six. As we head to the seventh inning, last pitched on Tuesday against the Cubs. Tossed a scoreless inning. Good numbers for Michael. 11th appearance, a 270 earned run average. Yeah, you think of that back end with Blazik and Thornburg and Jeremy Jeffress. Unfortunately, the Brewers haven't been in position here since Sunday to get those guys in in the situation that Council would prefer. In fact, Jeffress has not been needed since Sunday. Yeah, about a week. It's a long time to keep your closer on the sidelines. You might see him tonight, regardless of the score. Two balls, no strikes to Derek Dietrich. Top of the order for Miami. See Martin Maldonado as well. Down there is uh, Lucroy once again behind the plate. I have a feeling you might see Maldonado in the lineup tomorrow. Do a little grooming down there in the pen. Oh yeah. Got the Emery board. You didn't think I knew what that was called, did you? I'm impressed. I saw the look. <laughs> there's Aaron Hill with a chance, and there's the first out of the inning. You are well rounded, man. I, I I learned that fairly early in this in this gig. Got girls at home. Or at least I did. I have one, <laughs> a wife, but the other girls are gone, but Out of the house. I do not travel an Emory board. You don't? No. Okay. No. I wasn't going to ask. But do you? Uh, no. But thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So back in the day when you were catching, you know, say Juan Nieves or, or when you were not in the lineup, would we have seen you out there in the bullpen with said Emory board? No. No. Nope. A couple of hot dogs, maybe a Coke. <laughs> Pepsi, rather. My mistake. That's that's all right. He's working out pretty good out there. Yeah. A little hangnail. <laughs> o2 pitch to Prado. Another chance for Aaron Hill. Two up, two down here in the seventh. But that didn't mean there weren't Emery boards out in the bullpen. Okay. Not necessarily used for the fingernails. <laughs> you know, the other thing I've really come to appreciate in in this baseball broadcasting adventure is you just never know where the conversation is going to go during the course of a game. Football, basketball, and a radio, it's pretty much on point. You don't point. have time, do I you? No, you don't. Right. I'm still adjusting to that part of the uh, to the job here. I've been uh, holding off asking you if you were to dress as a superhero who would it be. <laughs> That's coming down the road. Stay tuned folks. I don't know if I could be as well, I don't know if creative is the word I don't know if I could put in the effort that mm -hmm. a lot of the fans have put in tonight like this guy. That is that's good. I mean that that's that is very very impressive. Yelich sends one to the gap in right center field and that's going to bounce off the wall and the hot month of April continues for Christian Yelich. He has walked twice tonight and now doubles his eighth double of the year. Yeah first hit in the series he's walked three times and able to get a pitch down in the strike zone and Golf it on out there into the gap in right center. Fastball from Blazik goes down and gets it, and it's a nice, easy swing. 
And it rips that one into the gap for a two out double. And that's trouble because now Stanton's coming up. You hear the uh, term exit velocity used a lot. You follow baseball even relatively closely and uh, this guy. The velo is about as good as it gets. When you talk about Giancarlo Stanton. And even the outs yeah. have a lot of speed. And the ground ball that he hit to uh, VR his last time up had. Had some hair on it. Well, one pitch from Blazing. No balls, two strikes to Giancarlo Stanton. Yeah, that ground ball you're referring to, Statcast had that at 117 miles per hour. Ground ball? A ground ball. Or I'm sorry, the home run was 117. The ground ball was merely 115. Yeah, I was going to say it wasn't yeah. much off. No. He hit it pretty well. One two that's strike three called and Stanton is taking care of this time around seventh inning stretch it is seven to one Miami. Seventh with the Marlins leading the Brewers seven to one. See if the home team can get the bats going here. First, let's revisit our carsoup.com trivia question. Who was the last Brewers hitter to break up a no hitter in the ninth inning? Jonathan Lucoy did last night, but prior to that, oh, Rock dropped the hit. You know, it was against the Mariners. It was Robin Yelts. Yeah, that was there, and uh, it was Mike Moore, right hander that had terrific stuff. There you go. Robin did that in 1985. He led off the inning. Did it a couple of times, as did George Scott. And Luke Croy last night with a blue single to right with one out in the ninth. Broke up the no hitter and actually tried to start a rally. The Brewers scored three times and had the bases loaded. And just a crazy game. Yeah. Don't leave early. You never know what's going to happen, do you? No, it's the beauty of baseball. I mean, this night has has obviously been a bad one so far for the Brewers, but let's see if they can't get the way in Chen. 
as he has given up just two hits. And the Marlins have this six run lead but they've stranded 12. Yeah. And uh, Chen is uh, he just threw his 90th pitch so he's been uh, doing pretty good tonight. His peak through the first four starts was 100. Is that will get everybody's attention. That right off the corner of that dugout and. That's a dangerous spot if you don't pay attention. Baseball comes skipping off that dugout. <laughs> Pulse rate pretty high there behind the dugout. Yeah. The guys saying I had you all the way. Don't uh -huh. worry. Yep. They have extended the uh, the screens beyond the backstop over to the corner of the dugouts and you know, trying to protect some of the fans and. Good move. It was much talked about as last season. Actually, it has been probably for a while with that last season. And there's Luke Croy getting into one in the right center field, a base hit. Cut off by Stanton. And Jonathan Luke Croy with his first hit of the night and hit number three for Milwaukee. Yeah, just uh, what a day. And uh, you'd be able to keep that batting average up. Luke at 280. And drills that one into the gap out there. Stan with good speed, able to hold Luke Croy to a single. That's just a pretty swing going to the opposite field on the pitch away. And Stanton with those long strides, he makes up a lot of ground very quickly. Big strong guy. The Brewers get the leadoff man aboard, and here's Chris Carter. Let's see if Chris can get into one here. Quiet series so far for him. He did walk his last trip in the fourth. Ball a strike to the first baseman. Last couple of games for Chris. Still has a healthy on base percentage of 349 at the moment. And fastball misses inside. Three and one. Yeah, Chris has uh, started every game at one at first base. Luke Curry had to start at first, so getting a lot of playing time. They can see where they're trying to work him down and in. Here comes a 3 1. Behind there, and the count is full. Chen has walked three so far in this game. Through his first four starts, he had only walked four. His last outing is. First winning decision of the season against the Dodgers in L.A. when six and two thirds. Strike three called. See Fox tracks has it right on the outside end. Yep, the only pitch that Chen used on the outer half of the plate caught the outside corner. And why wouldn't you have been looking inside if you're Chris Carter and that at bat? Everything in except for this pitch. Able to catch the outside corner with it. One out, one on in the seventh. And now Wei In Chin will work against a pinch hitter. And Alex Presley called up nine days ago. He has turned in some very good work at the plate. A lot has been, well, maybe not a lot, but it's certainly been mentioned the Brewers' struggles collectively in the area of pinch hitting, but it's been very good for Alex Presley, three for four in the role. Let's look at a curveball that misses. He was among those Brewers who kept the line moving in the ninth inning last night. Let's see what he's done in his first half dozen games with the big club. Yeah, it's been impressive. I mean, he's been able to make good contact, come up with some hits. Swung on, 
hit in the air left center field Ozuna on the run and he'll make the catch. They gave that one a pretty good ride to left center. Yeah, lefty versus lefty and uh, you know Presley again he's seen the baseball well put a good swing on it. Just got under that one a little bit. With a pinch homer last Sunday and he was trying to give that one a good ride two outs. McCroy the runner at first for Aaron Hill. Chen gets through this inning it would match his longest outing of the season he had a seven inning outing against the Nationals a game where he took a losing decision there 100 pitches he's now hit 102 here tonight and they got activity down in the bullpen you know the Marlins have a left hander up and throwing and this could be his last inning. But Reslow it looked like in the bullpen for Miami. A ball is strike to Aaron Hill. Continuing the battle to try to get things organized at the plate. And he gets into one down the line in left. Chance for extra bases. Lucroy on his way to third. Hill to second. Let's see if that gets Aaron going. There's a two out double. Yeah, able to tomahawk that pitch down the left field line. Had that ball not hit the corner as it juts out. It might have. Score to run. If he goes all the way down in that left field corner, I think Lucroy is going to be able to score. Turns on it right down the line. Watch it hit the wall out there just barely, and that's why Yelich was able to get to it before Lucroy had a chance to score. Good swing that time. That was a mistake by Chen, and he made him pay for it. So the Brewers have him on second and third. Two out opportunity for Ramon Flores. Ground ball to short and a liner to third. It looks like Chen will not have the opportunity to face him. As Don Mattingly making the slow walk. A good outing for his left hander second straight night that he's been able to say that a good outing from his left handed pitcher breaking the action Brewers down six but posing a threat here in inning number seven.
here in the bottom of the seventh inning and keep up with the crew wherever you are with MLB.com at bat the official app of the Brewers featuring live broadcasts scoring updates breaking news and more download at bat today free for your smartphone or tablet. Pitching change for the Marlins way in Chen goes six and two thirds but he steps out and stepping in is Craig Breslow. Yeah one of two left handers for Don Mattingly in that bullpen last year with the Red Sox. An 0 and 4 record one save and a 415 earned run average. Breslow has been around a while made his major league debut back in 2005 and you know, a few days ago at Los Angeles against the Dodgers a scoreless inning in two thirds. He can be vulnerable to giving up the big fly. That's not a big part of the game for Flores here, just trying to reach and extend the inning. He's grounded to short and lined to third. Jonathan Lucroy, the runner at third, Aaron Hill at second. Hill with the double. And Flores sends one shallow left field and that's going to fall and it's going to score two. Flores bloops one to left. And it's a seven to three ball game. Yeah, just getting ready to say Craig Council showed a lot of confidence in his young left handed hitter. And he had options on the bench with the left hander up. They're out there on the mound and Flores able to come through and didn't hit it all that well but able to muscle it out there in the left field. Breslow got in on his hands and he put it in a pretty good spot right in between everybody for a base hit and a couple of RBIs. Well, we got a game. Seven to three now. Brewers down. And here's Aaron Perez. Getting his second at bat of the nights. The fly ball to right in the fifth. Brewers trying to chip away again. They had a big deficit last night, made it very interesting. Big deficit tonight. And they're trying to get it to that level, trying to make it interesting here in inning number seven. Oh, that's got to give Flores a lot of confidence. I mean, lefty versus lefty, and you know, his manager allows him to stay up there in a, in a game. They're driving a couple of runs and he's able to get the job done. Big two run single. Well, Sophia telling us so earlier in this game, Craig Council wants to hang in there with Flores and give him a legit chance, and he's getting that. Uh, Aaron Perez back up with the big club this week and trying to keep this seventh inning going and get back to the top of the order. Breslow on in relief. One time Brewers draftee. Back in 2002, his big league debut three years later with the San Diego Padres. Lefties get to the big leagues quickly, don't they? Yes, they do. You know, they show that they can get left handers out, which he did not with Flores at the plate. A fast rise to the major leagues for these left handed pitchers. Well traveled 35 year old Craig Breslow. Perez will send this out of play. Keep this going. Breslow, we mentioned, has shown some vulnerability to giving up home runs. 12 of them a year ago in 65 innings of work with the Red Sox. Two two pitch to Perez. Swung on hit in the air deep center field. Ozuna going back and it is off the wall. And gone. Off the batter's eye and gone. And we got a game at Miller Park. Wow. Yeah, I was looking out there myself and I didn't see the second base umpire make a call. Third base umpire Dan Bellino was the one that made the call out there on the home run. 
I did not see the second base umpire Tony Randazzo give the home run call. I was with you. I wasn't sure where it landed. But how about Aaron Perez taking this one way back into center field. Ozuna running out of room and there you can see it right off the back wall and back onto the field of play. Oh yeah right there. Yep. Hit the wall actually hit the top of the fence after it hit the back wall and back onto the field of play. And it's a two run game and Mattingly has to go to his bullpen again game on here in Milwaukee seven five the Marlins lead down to two. First of the year, his second in the big leagues, and suddenly it's a two run game. As the Marlins again forced to go to their bullpen. We'll show you the, the one umpire who made the signal. Look at everybody in the park knew, but we we're looking for the second base umpire, and there he is, Dan Bellino. Well, he's in the uh, the <laughs> infield. Bellino looking around. So, All right, I saw a home run. Okay. <laughs> I guess if you're not sure these days with replay you just keep the play alive right I mean mm -hmm. that's the smart thing to do if you're not sure right but the third base umpire saw it as a home run and Perez with number one this year and it's a seven five game Brian Morris now on for Miami Yeah, third year with the Marlins a good year last year five and four three fourteen earned run average in sixty seven appearances check it out already the thirteenth appearance for Morris this year. He gets a lot of work. 67 appearances a year ago. No balls, two strikes to Domingo Santana. How about this for a two out rally? Two outs, a man at first base, and three consecutive hits. Aaron Hill, Ramon Flores, and Aaron Perez. 0 2 pitch to Santana. Morris coming over to the Marlins in a trade back in June of 2014. Traded by the Pirates. Two and two the count. 29 year old reliever that gave up only three home runs all last year he's already given up three this year all coming in the first week yeah yeah known for having uh, the ability to get ground balls career ground ball rate of 58 percent coming into the season 2 2 pitch good take. About this, if he reaches, that man would represent the tying run. If Santana can get on base, 
Morris with the 3 2. They went, and that will do it for the Brewers in the seventh. But they are back in the game. The Brewers score four times, two of them on this big fly off the bat of Hernan Perez. And we are through seven with the Marlins leading seven to five. As a two run homer, and we are through seven. The Brewers are within two. Middle game of this series. Change defensively. Alex Presley. The pinch hit roll stays in the game, and he'll be out there in center field. And Carlos Torres on the mound now for the crew. Yeah, 11th appearance for Torres. He's another guy that gets a lot of work. A 463 earned run average so far this year. Last pitched on Thursday against the Cubs at Wrigley. Tossed a scoreless inning. Well, the Brewers bouncing right off the mat. How about the bottom of the order the last couple of nights? Absolutely. Pretty they good work. Got back in the game last night with work from Presley and Flores and Walsh and New and Ice is a pinch hitter. They get back in the game here in the seventh tonight. Big blow there from Perez, the two run homer. Mullen Flores, a two run single. Aaron Hill kept the inning going with a double, and now they need. Carlos Torres to keep this a two run game as Justin Bohr will lead things off. He's single to right in the first and he's been quiet since. A fly ball to right and then strikeouts in the fourth and the sixth. So again, the Brewers have battled back. This time with a few more innings to work with. That great Council hanging in there with Flores. He gets the base hit, then Perez with the big homer. Eight and nine in the order, right? Flores and Perez. Encouraging signs for this club is you figure if the Brewers are going to make such a run in this game, it would come from the biggest of the bats, Carter, Braun. Lucroy started the inning with a single, so it was some veteran work, Aaron Hill as well, but Guys who are not under that category of veterans once again coming through. Unfortunately, the leadoff man here for the Marlins reaches Justin Bohr drawing a walk. Man just can't come out of the bullpen walking batters late in the game. Brewers have walked their share of hitters tonight. Is that seven? Seven. Yeah. Michael Blazik had a clean inning. He gave up a hit, but no runs. That was the first time tonight that Miami did not score. They put runs on the board in each of the first six. Pinch runner now, Miguel Rojas. There's Ozuna, one of four Marlins to Homer tonight. They have all been solo shots. 
third homer of the year for the Miami center fielder. Important assignment right now for Carlos Torres. His team is back in the game. They got to put up a zero. Mandatory. Keep that momentum in the Brewers dugout. And Torres, the guy used to getting a lot of work last year with the Mets, 59 appearances out of the pen. And a busy man so far this season. It's 73 appearances for the Mets in 2014. Big swing from Ozuna. Thirty three year old from Santa Cruz California. Carlos Torres. Ready to bring the one two to Marcelo Zuna. Man, cut fastball. He'll throw a slider in that two seam fastball and could use a ground ball. Eight relievers in that Brewers bullpen, and a good thing because starters have not been able to get too deep in games. And Chase Anderson, four and a third here tonight. Everything around that outside corner. And the Brewers last night using David Goforth for the first time this season. Had two innings out of him and two innings out of Blaine Boyer last night. Two balls, two strikes to Ozuna. Last night hit into a 5 4 3 triple play. Brewers could stand to turn two right here. Two and two the count. Signee on the 2nd of April, Carlos Torres. As Ozuna sends this out of play. Signed three days after the Braves released him. Two for three nights so far for Ozuna. Swung on and missed. Big punch out. Nice cut fastball. Not even close to the corner, but Ozuna, I guess, had it in his mind he was going to swing. He was about a foot off the plate. Check it out. Cut fastball, and Lucroy has to reach for it. Now the double play. Yeah, that would work. Torres will face the catcher JT Real Muto. He's extended his hitting streak to six games tonight. There's a couple of hits and four at bats. Has scored a couple of runs. In this stretch, Real Muto now over the last nearly six games is 12 for his last 23. One scoring double in the third. Infield single in the fifth. He has scored twice. They yeah, beat out a relatively routine ground ball to third. The guy can run for a catcher. Yeah. He's still young. Hasn't been beat up enough back yeah, there. Needs will, uh, needs will start failing him. <laughs> Well, you hope not. Just joking, but yeah, normally catchers can't run all that right. well because of that. You know, right. you get all bound up, and 
And he's starting to get a little bit sore, but he can run. And he can hit a little bit too. This is a liner, but Santana's right there. Two men out. And that Torres got away with one right there. That was a hanger. Danny Echevarria. He is homered tonight. He's got a three hit night. Came in with a 179 batting average. You see what he's bumped it up to this evening. He hit 281 last year. He gets most of the attention because of his work out at shortstop. Two years ago, hit 276, and last year a career best 281. Yeah, three hits has him up to 211, so he's run off a slow start. Here's another one. Four hit night for Adani Echevarria. Marlins now with 13 hits in the game. Not a bad guy to have come off your bench late. Boy, no kidding. Ichiro. He gets a nice round of applause wherever he goes, and there's pretty obvious reason for that. He had two hits last night. He is 55 away from 3,000 in the major leagues. In the lineup in right field for last night's series opener. Yep, and really no showing no signs of slowing down, is he? I mean, it's just a matter of whether he's going to be able to get enough playing time to, you know, get those hits that he needs for 3,000. You got to figure that's why he's still playing. Sure. It is a crowded outfield. A lot of tremendous talent. Yelich, Ozuna, and Stanton. Two hits last night move Ichiro to 33rd. Past Frank Robinson. Next on the list is Wee Willie Keeler. Hit him where they ain't. Ten hits behind him. And Ichiro does a lot of that, hitting him where they ain't. Done it for a long time. The 42 year old from Japan, and he laces one down the line, a foul ball. Still can get that bad head out. Comes the inside corner, comes the outside corner, and I guess that's why he's got over 4,200 hits combined between the major leagues and Japan. First year in the big leagues here, he was the most valuable player and rookie of the year. 242 hits that season, but he even had it had an even better season a few years later. 262, but Torres gets him in this matchup as Ichiro strikes out, and it remains a two-run game here in Milwaukee.
to a test, left to right, Iron Man, Mr. Incredible, Spider-Man, Bernie, Batman. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. I'm getting ready for a Brewers Live post game. See what we get ready for while we wait for this ball game to conclude. At least it's a close one right now, folks. Brewers very much in this one. They go to bat in the bottom of the eighth inning, down seven to five right now. Rock's going to join me for Brewers Live post game. We're going to hear from Sophia as well. Get inside the Brewer clubhouse, Craig Council. See if the Brewers can pull one out a late Saturday night rally. What do you say, guys? Sounds like a plan. Miguel Rojas came in as a pinch runner. He'll stay in the game and work over at first base. And Kyle Bearclaw now on for the Marlins. Yeah, best name in the big leagues. Kyle Bearclaw acquired last year from the St. Louis Cardinals back at the trading deadline. 25 games for the Miami Marlins last year. Two and one at 259 earned run average. Yeah, he was part of that trade for Steve Ciszek. Sent to St. Louis. Jonathan VR leading off the bottom of the eighth, and Rojas will get some early work. And there's out number one. Hey, tomorrow is Ryan Braun Bobblehead Day at Miller Park. The Brewers and Marlins wrap up their series with a Sunday matinee, and all fans will get a Ryan Braun home run leader bobble courtesy of U.S. Cellular. Don't miss it. What's the weather supposed to be like tomorrow? More rain? Let me check that out. Is there a better place I, to be I think than Miller Park when it's raining? I was going to say it doesn't matter, does it? Oh, I'm It'll just saying. Right I mean, what yeah. else is there to do? Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be a little chilly. Come on out, get a bobblehead. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you see a Brewers win. It'll be a little chilly. Good tailgating weather. Get out there and have your fun before the game, and then come on in. Nice and warm and. Buttoned up Miller Park, get your bobblehead, watch the Brewers and the Marlins. By the way, I think uh, Kashan had some help naming all those superheroes. Yeah, I, I think so. I'm not buying that he knew them all. <laughs> I'd like that hashed out during Brewers Live postgame. I'm going to get to the bottom of okay. it. One and one to Ryan Braun. That's murderer's row right there. They get after with that group. <laughs> Long has to get out of the way there with that offering from Bear Claw. Marlins bullpen scuffling here for the second straight night. And numbers, uh, you know, started out pretty good for Chen, but six and two thirds, three runs, four hits. You know, Brew was able to get to him, chase him, and then got into that bullpen. Touched up Breslow a little bit. Two balls, two strikes. In the air, right side, and there will be no play for Rojas. Brewers with a four run seventh inning to get back into the game. There's all Marlins for most of the night, scoring in each of the first six innings, but Michael Blazek kept them off the board in the seventh. Carlos Torres did the same in the top of the eighth. 2 2 pitch. It's got a pretty good arm. Bear Claw 96 with that last fastball. Good slider. Well, kind of all over the place, isn't he? Yes, he is. We'll see if the Brewers can take some advantage of that. A full count now to the left fielder. Here it comes. Hard ground ball to second. Dietrich gobbles it up. Two outs. Nick Bear class, he started the year in Triple A New Orleans, got called up on April 17th.
25 appearances last year for the Marlins. Here's Jonathan Lucroy. He started that four run seventh. The base hit to right. And after the next two hitters were retired, the Brewers went to work with the bottom of the order. Five runs on six hits here for Milwaukee. Seven runs on 13 hits for the Marlins. Lucroy sends one into right field. Stanton on the run, and that is a fair ball into the corner. Lucroy turns second on his way to third, and he is in there. Well, that's just uh, vintage Jonathan Lucroy. Both of his hits coming to right field tonight. Single last time up, and. Had Giancarlo start Stanton on his horse to try to get into the corner, couldn't do it. They have a slider that hung up there, and Lucroy doing a nice job taking it to the opposite field. Stanton really didn't get close. And the Brewers catcher able to go all the way around to third base. I think Luke caught for a second, that might leave the ballpark. And then he hits the afterburners. 90 feet away. Motor it in. First triple of the year for Jonathan Lucroy. Tying run comes to the plate. And the battling Brewers here. They were down seven to one going into the bottom of the seventh. Hold within two. Now a swing away from tying the game. Bear Claw's 25 appearances last year, he gave up one homer. Has not given up a big fly this season through his first eight appearances. Facing the big first baseman with five homers, 15 RBIs. 19 hits for him this year. 14 have gone for extra bases, the five homers and the nine doubles. Hey, Marlins really been working Chris Carter inside tonight, particularly tonight. Let's see if they go back in there again. There they come. Carter fouls it off. Two balls, two strikes. That one off. Well, they just keep pounding him inside. I know he likes to get his big arms extended. Well, every power hitter likes to do that, but the trick is to get it in there, and they have tonight. They haven't really left one out over the plate on him. See if Bear Claw can make a mistake. See if Carter can jump on it. 2 2 pitch. Strike three call. And the inning is over. It remains a 7 5 game as we move to the ninth.
Game summary, it's been long ball power from the Miami Marlins tonight. Four homers, all solo shots, including a 462-foot blast from Giancarlo Stanton. That's Marcelo Zuna, the last of the four. But the Brewers come off the canvas in the bottom of the seventh inning and score four times the bottom of the order. Aaron Hill, Ramon Flores, and Aaron on Perez doing their part. Perez with a two-run homer, his second in the big leagues, his first this year, and it has... Gotten the Brewers back into the game as we move to the top of the ninth here at Miller Park. 7-5 your score. And on now for Milwaukee is Tyler Thornburg. Well, good numbers for Tyler. So Craig Council is trying to put up yet another zero after the Marlins were able to score in the first six innings. Two consecutive zeros. And now Thornburg on for the ninth time. Last pitched on Sunday against the Phillies. So it's been a while for Thornburg. A three up three down eighth included a couple of strikeouts so almost a week in between appearances for Thornburg. Yes, some credit to Blazik and Torres for helping keep those Marlins off the board and giving the Brewers a chance to get back into it. We mentioned in our game summary the home run power first pitch of the night Derek Dietrich drilled one over the wall and right. One pitch from Thornburg. Dietrich a one for four night. He has driven in two. RBI ground out in the third inning. Also a walk in the second. Figures to play a lot of second base moving forward for the Marlins after the suspension of D. Gordon. Yeah, that's going to hurt the Marlins in a lot of different ways, not just. With the offense, but defensively. Well, of course, they haven't shown much of a letdown the last couple of nights. They have not. Six straight wins for Don Mattingly's team. Well, they're talking with Christian Yelich, who's had a terrific month of April. Dietrich's average sitting at 286 with an on base percentage of 390. Two balls, two strikes. Chase Anderson went four and a third. We've got five runs, four of which were earned. There's Capuano in the inning in two thirds, and then one apiece for Blazik Torres, and now Thornburg here in the ninth. Full count to Dietrich, the leadoff hitter here for the fish. Payoff pitch coming. Got him swinging. Gets him on the changeup for out number one. Yeah, that's a good changeup. That's uh, probably. His best pitch is hard to tell because he's got three pitches that are working so well for him right now. Really good pitch to left handers and you know, Dietrich out in front over the top. Good pitch. One out is Thornburg will face Martin Prado. Fastball for strike one. Prado singled the center in the second inning. That's his one hit tonight. He's had three hits in his last three games. Three hits each in his last three games. With his second inning single tonight, he extends his hitting streak to six games. Man, it's not A.J. Ramos getting up. And that's David Phelps. Yeah, well, the uh, Marlins closer apparently not available tonight. Of course, there's a reason for that. He's pitched in five of the last six games for the Marlins. Can't use him every night. You figure if you were Don Mattingly, the way the game was going last night, you wouldn't 
wouldn't need to use Ramos, but he needed him. And a ground ball charging, and well, Briar was ready, but Perez cutting in front, unable to make the play, and Prado is on. Yeah, it would have been a tough play for either one of them. That could very well go as a base hit. I mean, Prado gets eaten up right off the end of the bat, and I guess uh, Perez had the only shot at it. Goes under his glove and knocks it away from Jonathan Br. So one out, one on here in the ninth for Miami. And that will be an infield hit. Yeah. Would have been a tough play. Yep. It's Christian Yelich. He doubled to right center his last at bat in the seventh inning. He's also walked a couple of times tonight. Marlins with 14 hits in this game. They have stranded 14 runners. That's how many the Cubs left on base Thursday afternoon in that 7 to 2 win at Wrigley Field. Right. So things could be a lot worse right now for the Brewers. 14 left on base. Wow. One one pitch. That's in there. Change has him in front of all two strikes. See if Thornburg can put him away. Here comes the one two. Yep, change up high fastball. Good pitch by Thornburg and a pretty good job by Yelich to get a bat on it. Big difference in velocity, 95 with the fastball right there. Rado, the runner at first, with one out of the ninth. Again, the one two. His first work since last Sunday against the Phillies. And you would think he'd struggle a little bit with his off speed stuff. Velocity's starting to creep up a little bit. He started out the. This appearance about 93 has been touching 95. Ready with the 2 2. He got him swinging. Two men out here in the ninth. Let's check out Miller Lights. What's on tap tomorrow? Tom Kohler on the mound for Miami as the Brewers will see a right handed starter for the first time in this series, and Willie Peralta. Showing some signs of improvement his last couple of outings. Looking for his second win of the year. We'll get things started tomorrow at 12:30, right here on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Yeah, not a bad start against the Cubs. Showing some encouraging signs his last couple of times out is Willie Peralta. Well, this conversation right here with uh, Derek Johnson and Luke Croy and Thornburg is all about the guy on deck. Ramos, you got Stanton at the plate. You might want to be a little careful with Stanton and go after Rojas. Big difference in run production here. You don't want to make any mm -hmm. mistakes. Stanton's home run in the fourth inning was measured at 462 feet. Is homered in five of his last six games. He was out of the lineup last night was Giancarlo Stanton. The 1 0. Bird is swung on and missed. Yeah, keep throwing those down there. If he wants to swing at him, let him. Good curveball. Two of them in a row. Trying to get through this ninth inning. Back to the fastball. And the 
curve is low. And now's not the time to try to come inside with the count in Stanton's favor. Everything down, the one pitch in off the corner. Careful here with a three and one count. And the curve is now run the count full. Thornburg versus Stanton. And the Brewers keep it a two run game here in the ninth. Here comes the payoff. Ball four. Well, Stanton walks for the second time tonight. Yeah, and this is the guy they wanted all along. I mean, I guess you don't intentionally walk a guy with a man at first. He tried to get Stanton to chase, which, you know, he did. Miguel Rojas came on as a pinch runner in the eighth. Gains the game at first base. Had a good night last night. But you got to get this guy. You got Ozuna on deck. Infield single from Prado and a walk to Stanton. That's how the Marlins have runners at first and second with two men out. Thornburg drops a curveball. In the lineup last night at shortstop was Rojas. To Berea came off the bench late. A ball to strike. And Roe has had a couple of hits, single and a double, so doing a pretty good job off the bench. Walked his first time up. Thornburg missing with a fastball. Rojas originally signed with the Reds in 2005. He was with the Dodgers and was part of that trade along with D. Gordon to Miami in 2014. 2 1 pitch. Fastball misses again. Well, you pitch around Stanton to go after the guy that you want to get out, and now. He's got a three and one count making him even a better hitter and then on deck you've got trouble playing with fire right now. The three one and the bases are loaded again. The Marlins have stranded 14 runners tonight. Job now is to increase that total to 17 as David Goforth, who pitched last night, is getting loose again. In a couple of innings last night, did Goforth gave up a run? Marcelo Zuna, he homered to right center in the sixth inning. Also had an infield single in the third. Bases are loaded with two outs. Another night with a lot of walks here from Brewers pitchers. Swings through a fastball. Yeah, big hack right down the middle. I haven't seen too many change-ups from Thornburg in this inning. Threw that one to Dietrich to strike him out, but well, he hasn't had the count in which to do it. One-one pitch. Another fastball. 
But now let's see maybe if he goes that direction. Either that or that curveball in the dirt. Lotto at third, Stanton at second, Rojas at first. Thornburg ready to bring the one two. Fastball strike three. Wasn't going to mess around with the nope, change up of the curveball. Nope. So the Marlins now have stranded 17 runners. Brewers down two. Last chance coming up for the crew. Seven five Marlins last chance here for the Brewers tonight. Brewers baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Spend the night with luxury. Changes here for the Marlins. Chris Johnson now checks in. He'll play first base. Miguel Rojas moves over to second. I mentioned A.J. Ramos has been pretty busy lately, so David Phelps trying to close it tonight for Miami. Yeah, he's been busy too. Five of the last seven, although he did have last night off. You see his numbers very good for Phelps. Twelfth appearance and 129 earned run average. And Alex Presley leading things off in a fly ball to center field. His first at bat of the night came in as a pinch hitter in the seventh. It was a four run inning for Milwaukee that got it back into the game. Good work out of the bullpen tonight. And Blazik, Torres, and Thornburg. Brewers go into this ninth inning with a chance. Let's see what they do with it. Now the former Yankee, David Phelps. Fastball, meal mid 90s, mid to low 90s, and a pretty good curveball. Two strike pitch. Put in the air, center field. Ozuna on the run and makes the catch at the warning track. Uh, second time for Presley, right? First time up deep in the left center. And this time taking Ozuna right back to the track in center field. Giving this one a pretty good ride. He's swinging it well. He's seeing it well. And about midway on the track, no problem for Ozuna. Had it covered all the way. Here's Aaron Hill. He doubled his last trip. Here's first hit of the night. Brewers five runs on seven hits. 
The Marlins seven runs, 14 hits, and they have stranded 17 runners. Amazing, isn't it? It is. That's why the Brewers are still in this. Well, they've left the bases loaded in four different innings. Including the top of the ninth. Thornburg left him loaded, got Ozuna. Punched him out of the fastball. No balls, two strikes to Aaron Hill. Brewers team keeps punching. It all looked lost last night. Made it very interesting in the ninth. Nothing was going well for most of this game tonight. With a four run seventh, has him alive. Good take from Aaron Hill on a fastball. Sends it in the air. Routine for Rojas. Two men out of the ninth. Yeah, it took a little off that time. Look at a change of 89 miles an hour. Out in front. It was Kirk Neuenheis. He kept that ninth inning going last night with a walk. Trying to keep it going tonight. One save in the career of David Phelps came two years ago as a Yankee. The chopper is foul. If Newman Heist can reach, you have Perez on deck, who homered in the seventh inning. He's the part of the order that's done a lot of damage the last couple of nights. Pinch hitters down at the bottom of the order. Adding these teams trying to extend the winning streak to seven. And it looks like it'll happen. A fly ball. Left center. Ozuna is there. And the Marlins have won seven straight. Well, the Brewers again battled back, but unfortunately again. Fall short as Miami takes the first two games of this series. Brewers will try to get the finale tomorrow afternoon, but your final tonight, Miami 7 and the Brewers 5. Let's set it down to Craig Deshaun standing by with Brewers Live Post Game. Okay, Matt, thanks very much. Of course, Craig Council coming up on the way on Brewers Live Post Game. The Brewers rally in this one. We'll show you what happened early, though, to give the Marlins a lead. The Brewers could not catch up. And we'll also hear from Juan Nieves as well. Stay with us. Brewers Live Post Game is next.